that's what it's all about. We go out, we do the research, we travel, we go to locations and we share great adventures and explore with you. So give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, yada, yada, yada. But today we're going to go to a very special location. I'm going to show you something really, really unique. But first, to put some kind of small details into context here, I wanted you to see some of the calibers of uh, typical known um, munitions during the Second World War. This is a 792 German MG machine gun or Mauser rifle K98 uh, cartridge. This is a 50 caliber found on the Western Front of the Americans, so 12.7 millimeter. This is a Flak 38 um, 20 millimeter anti aircraft gun uh, cartridge found on the Atlantic Wall. This is a 23 millimeter. Soviet Red Army cartridge found on the Eastern Front near the border of Poland. This is a 37 millimeter cartridge found on the battlefields just east of Berlin. And this is a 25 pounder brass 88 millimeter cartridge found also at a battlefield where the Germans met the Allied. So why am I showing you this? Well, that's because some time ago I promised you I wanted to show you, share with you something that was at a location where you saw a very incredible bunker. I'm going to put a link in the video description and I strongly suggest you watch that video first, then come back to that one. You just click under the video where it says show more, watch that video of the incredible bunker that has been opened and we had the chance to go inside and have a look. And what was in that bunker? Well, it was a gun that had this caliber and just see how ridiculously small even the 50, uh, 25 pounder are compared to this and if you take a 20 millimeter cartridge like this that could easily shoot down an allied aircraft it's ridiculous but i promised you something very special and this gun was 38 centimeter in caliber, 15 inches, and it used to look like that. And it almost does even today. And that's what it's gonna be all about today. We are going back in time, and I'm gonna show you one of the biggest guns that is still existing out there from the Second World War. So why don't you join us? Let's go out and find the past together right now. All right, so this is what we came to show you. 40, 38 centimeter gun, same as on the Bismarck and Tirpitz. This is the gun position, ammo storage, different kinds of utility rooms, heater, uh, warm system around there, generators. And this is what it looks like on the um, picture. And here it is in real time. Wow, this is a Friedrich Krupp. Essen, Germany made cannon, 38 centimeter caliber. It's uh, 52 guys needing to operate it. Uh, it could elevate to about 52 degrees with a explosive shell of 500 kilos. It could shoot it out about 43,000 meters with an 800 kilo shell in the barrel. Wow, absolutely insane. See there is the pedestal, always watch us going up and down that ladder, nothing on top, well this is what was on top. So it's like pivoting around the axis here and kind of a railroad track going around to position it and then the elevation of the barrel and wham off it went. There is the end of the barrel, it was just fired a few times during the wartime actually. There's no kind of war that it fought. There are the uh, rifle kind of uh, tracks twisting and turning the uh, projectile to get the right velocity and stability. And I can't even see in there. It's insane. It's actually what's in there. That's the end. It's a guy watching there, I don't know. <laughs> Can you see that? That is the projectile. I actually managed to zoom straight through the barrel. Amazing. 
now we're gonna have a look inside look at this look at that structure it's got armor plates doors coming in and out there doors there imagining people running around here I'm not sure what these hatches are for seems like they can go up like that I'm not sure I've never seen that so let's enter cannon house itself that is really nice that we are allowed to go in here wow be very careful here son don't fall through here wow is that hot holy look at this wow fully equipped as it was look at that cartridge power there tip look at that oh my god it's huge Look at that space in there. There's the bridge, that's about 20 tons or something. Holy crap. That is insane. I'm saying too much insane, I know. Look there, there's, that's go up. You can actually crawl through there. Wow. We go in here. You can see Friedrich Krupp, number 79. Markings everywhere. Full und Ablaubstutzen. Glycerin and here, wow. So there's the trolley coming in through those gates. Loaded up here. Put the shell on. Handgriff. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Handgriff. Munition trolley. There's the cartridge. As you can see through the bell when I recorded it. There's a hoist. That's a cradle. The hoist on the back. Look at this. It's just as it was. Wow. A lot of electricity there. With your original riding. Can you see that? Wow, then coming over to that one, look at that, iron, up firing, on and log, iron, wow, oh, love this. This one is used to push in and out the powder cartridges. Hoist for the gunpowder, I think. Uh, was it manual? I don't know. Could be manual, electrical. Rooms over there, not available for us, but uh, you can see so many different structures and details here. It's absolutely insane. All of that just to fire around. 40 meters away and even heating something that's the most incredible thing that was used to clean the barrel I think yeah brush was shoved through the barrel to clean it this is a 12.7 centimeter inner cannon because when they want to test fire the cannon they didn't want to to um, do too much damage to the uh, barrel because it had only so so many uh, cartridges could shoot then they put that into a barrel and they test fire it with that thing there looks like they actually had a um, ventilation system here because this is very hot in here so maybe that was put up after it could also be that the Germans found out in the heat in the summer it's like 50 degrees in here when all this machinery is running could probably be very very hot down in the basement there lifted it up with these uh, contraptions here and these hoists then they flip down this lid here flip like that and they rolled the tip onto the table and this one was used and went on its own rails 
and it was put into the backside of the cannon. They shut the bridge when all the stuff was in there and boom. The board, it can uh, calculate the length, the corrections of this and that, side correction, speed, everything that they needed to put into the, uh, the shell that they were about to send off out there in the sea. Actually still working, look at that. All of these levers, they, look at that. If you turn one, you turn the other. So if you do something like this one here, you turn that, that moves another lever. This one moves that one. It's insane, look at that, it's so intricate. Yeah, look at that, you can go like up and down. That's the wind. That is amazing, look at that. If you pull this thing here, Anschlag wind, that is amazing. Look at that. There's the uh, hoist, you can see. That one laying on the table there, that thing grabbed it and the crane could transport it from this side over to the other side. Hoist with a huge round in the beladen to you. Beladen to you. Oh, look at that. Tools, original tools for whatever they did here. That's been closed, that goes out. Look at that. Munitionsschlüsse geschlossen. Belade. Oh, this is so cool. They could put on more, and all of these are ready to go. Different kinds of kilos and blast tips. Look at the size of these tools here. Insane. They all use this in here. Toolbox different kinds of tools here you can see the system hoisting up the gunpowder about 100 kilos almost this is the containers where the powder was inside i guess yeah look at that the original casing still there wow and one of the hoists here gunpowder cases I've actually found several of these also found one in a bunker and uh, it was just standing there all by itself one of the wagons with uh, two of the shells see how it worked look at that that's the ammo trolleys. Hope you're enjoying the little trip we've done for you. It's a lot of in and out and up and down. This is the actual, this is very, very rare to see. This is the actual track that the cannon rides on. You can see that here. So now I get the hang of it. These are moved when the cannon are turned around. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, so hope you're enjoying this a lot of work and it's very very hot here but it's our pleasure to do this for all of you so you can see things that you probably would never had a chance to see and for us as well this is this is just amazing just amazing i'm probably using that word a lot but it is it's actually something you just go like boom wow Look at this, we're going round again. This time it's a real deal where the gun is actually planted right in there. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted you to see this. Look at that. That is a gun up there. And that's not very often to see. There's finally a foundation with a gun. 
I think these were used when they hoisted this gun down here. Wow. Wow, these are just dwarfs compared to the 38 centimeter gun that the Germans had there. And they had several all over Europe and the Atlantic Wall. Even the guns at Navarone are just small pieces of nothing compared to this, these beasts here. But nevertheless, if you haven't seen that video or movie, The um, Guns at Navarone, I strongly suggest you do because it's absolutely epic and you get a very good understanding of things going on during the Second World War. If you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, comment, comment. And as you saw, we pass on to you by our Patreon program. So you can check out how to become a Patreon supporter in the link in the video description. Other than that, a massive thank you to all of you supporting us by Patreon and PayPal. Couldn't have done it without you. And this is the result. We can show you greatness that you might never have ever been able to see before if it hasn't been for us doing the research, traveling and going to this location. Well, nevertheless, thank you for being here. We'll definitely see you later. Stay safe, keep smiling. And remember, history is everywhere.